Alright, welcome back to the Super Coach Knife channel. In this video, we're looking at the uh, AFL Super Coach round review after round 12. The uh, first of the buy rounds. Uh, and as you can see there, we got uh, a nice score, 1918, which uh, was top 6% for the round and has got us back inside the top 10k. Um, so if we go in and have a look at the team. Uh, you can see in defense we had uh, a full uh, roster available plus we also had a, uh, a bench option so Tom Stewart with 127 so he was uh, one of the trade-ins last week and I guess a uh, very valuable in terms of his buy coverage um, so you know we're, we're happy with that score he's not playing this week but this is the easy week to cover uh, Nick Dacos was our VC, and we we took that score. Um, in the end, probably was slightly the wrong decision, but uh, we were very comfortable with getting that uh, 123 score in his uh, in his total. Uh, John Dawson, 106. So uh, you know, getting a ton is uh, is always a good thing. Uh, Jack Zeevil, So this is a bit uh, disappointing and a bit worrying. 59 so he's now gone three weeks without a ton um, you know might be getting a bit older a bit tired um, whether it's worth trading out you know there is a buy coming up for the north so that might give him a bit of a break and a freshen up um, so we could hold or there is a possibility of, of doing a bit of a trade but uh, we'll, we'll think about that Will Day with an 81, so I guess, you know, he's he's averaging 90, which you, we thought was we were going to get a bit more out of him, but 90 is not the worst average. Uh, and Josh Weddle with a 90 as well this week, so his average is pushing up, he's making us lots of money, um, and we're getting closer to a situation where we might only need two trades to upgrade that last, uh, last position potentially. Uh, Chinkotta also had a run with 61. Um, yeah, we could have potentially traded him with Zeeble using our Constable as a little loop, but uh, we didn't predict that uh, Zeeble would get less than 60. <laughs> uh, so onto the midfield, a Bont with 113. So solid as ever from the Bont. Uh, Zach Merritt, he was our captain, so you know we could have got a few extra points out of captaining him. Uh, he was on about 100 at half time. I saw on the live scores and I thought, oh, this is a terrible decision. But uh, then I checked again at three quarter time, he was still on about 100. So I don't know what happened there. Um, but yeah, you know, that's why we brought him into the team. We knew he was going to get some good scores during this time of the year. Uh, Tom Green with 89. So I guess a little bit under his average, but. You know, it's not the worst score from a, uh, you know, midfielder. Noah Anderson with 120, so I guess he's had a couple of flat weeks, but good to see he came back in time for the, the buy coverage, which is why we brought him in. And uh, Bailey Humphrey with a 99. So uh, two weeks he's looked after us with the scoring. Um, really good trade. And, and obviously now we've got heaps of money there between Ashcroft and him to, to upgrade that last midfield position. Uh, so into the rucks and, and a big week for our rucks. Timmy English with 156, so great to see him back in form. And uh, and Kieran Briggs was one of our other trade-ins this week. So, uh, you know, I figured that he'd, he'd make us a, a quick bit of money during the, the buy rounds, uh, help us upgrade our last forward slot, uh, and he absolutely delivered with a 128. So uh, three-round average and season average, consequently, of 113. Um, you know, it just needs to play the next two games and, you know, should well well and truly be above 400k, which will uh, definitely help us with our final forward ruck up upgrades. Uh, and then, I guess, talking about forwards, so we had Taranto with 111, you know, he's just ticking along nicely. Same with Rosie, 98, that's great to see. Um, Harry Sheasel with the 72, um, so... You know, he's he's doing all right for a rookie. You know that he wasn't going to be up and up and up. He'll be another one that'll benefit from the buy. Um, 
Seamus Mitchell was a late out that we missed, but we did get Angwin's score on the bench here of 38. Uh, and Eddie Ford with a 48 has made us, what's that, uh, 80k or 90k? What was he, 102? Let's have a look. Oh, 72, yeah, so he's 123. So 72k, you know, like we put that together, it brings us money, plus, you know, Mitchell, we're, we're well on our way there in the forward line as well. So in terms of the, the trades this week, uh, you know, I don't think we, we are going to do any trades. However, the one that we might be tempted into, uh, and this is sort of predicated on the fact that we've still got three upgrades to make with 10 trades left. Uh, so, you know, we might have a, a luxury trade or two there up the sleeve is we could potentially get out of Zeeble and get ourselves into some Jack Sinclair. So... I guess having the buy last week means that Sinclair is now free for the rest of the season, um, which could also help in a, uh, a few other uh, sort of weeks. So not just this week, but rounds 14, 15 in particular. Um, yeah, and I guess obviously, you know, doesn't doesn't really weaken the side or anything. If anything, it probably strengthens it a little bit. Yeah, other than that, you know, we've got plenty of numbers this week. We only need 18, and if we do all the, the quick swaps and trades, so Chincotta in for Stewart. Clary's back this week, so I'm thinking this is going to prove to be a good hold. And we'll get him in for Ford. So, you know, we've got coverage on every line. We might have to bench Briggs this week, which is a bit flat, but <laughs> we did bring him in for cash gen more so. Um, I might just do one more little swing so that we've got a, a sort of loophole option here in the the back, uh, the forward line, I should say. So we'll just load these guys up. Oh, we don't have one in the back line, but that's fine. So, you know, we've got 22 on field plus the three emergencies. So we've got more than enough players this week. So, you know, we probably won't cop a score from, say, a Chincotta or a Johnson. Um, or even, like, a Seamus Mitchell. So that's okay. Uh, in terms of vice-captain, captain this week, if we have a quick look at the, the draw. So we've got Sydney... The Bulldogs, or the Bulldogs against Port, that sort of says to me that Timmy English is going to be a good VC shout. Uh, and then the captaincy, I think we go the aggressive option, and Clary Oliver. So, obviously a lot of people got off him with the hamstring injury, and, uh, you know, won't be able to get him back in. So, you know, it could prove to be a real point of difference captaincy option for those that uh, held on to him. Um, but yeah, you know, especially if English pops off, I, I, we might not even be using that, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> but um, just good to have there in case. Alright, so I think that uh, just about covers it. Yeah. So I guess obviously experimenting with a different style of video uh, in preparation for a couple of weeks uh, absence in the near future. Got a little uh, holiday coming up, so I won't have the computer around. So I was thinking if I can access something like this, then uh, you know, I can still churn the content out and whatnot. So let me know in the comment section if, if this is okay. Uh, or if it's, uh, you know, you'd rather just not see anything <laughs> for two weeks. Um, and yeah, obviously, if you are enjoying all the content, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel. The subscriber count is, is blowing up at the moment, which is pretty cool. Uh, but other than that, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.